Hello and welcome to another part of this French Bulldog tutorial. In this part I'm going to be drawing the ear um, from um, start to finish. The video is in real time. I'll add a few comments as we go along explaining um, bits and pieces and techniques and, and colours used. Um, so grab your pencils if you're joining in or grab your cup of tea if you're just watching and let's get started. Okay, so I've already started to put some base layer down on this um, ear that you can see here. Unfortunately, the camera wasn't picking it up very well, um, so I haven't um, haven't bothered to sort of keep that in the video. But I took a couple of minutes just making sure that I'd got a good base layer of the warm grey one um, and even some of the warm grey two actually out towards the edges, um, just down on the ear so that we had a good coverage um, of the pencil. And I'm just taking a Van Dyke brown now and just starting to sort of plot in some of the uh, the fur direction and you know, some of the little landmarks on the ear um, just so that we can see where we're going from here. The actual picture, um, the actual portrait of the dog that we're doing is quite small. It's only about sort of seven inches um, by seven inches. So you can see uh, that the ear is really not sort of that large at all. So it was obviously important that I keep a sharp pencil um, and I think all of my pencils you'll see in the video are, are really quite sharp um, throughout this, um, whilst I'm doing this ear throughout this, this drawing. So I'm just looking, sort of taking my time, looking at the reference photograph, um, sort of working out where I need to plot bits and pieces um, and, you know, sort of uh, plotting those in so that they help me uh, with the next part. So I'm, I'm now that I've plotted the, um, the, the areas in, the landmarks in, I'm just going over with a warm grey wand to just and make sure I've got a bit more um, base layer down and uh, just to make sure I've got some good coverage and to just start also to plot areas in even with the lighter colours even if the video can't pick it up um, that well I am sort of plotting in direction of fur and just making sure that I'm happy with the the, the sort of overall drawing of the um, the ear before I start to put too much colour down um, and it starts to get too dark. So this area that I'm working on at the minute is sort of where the, the ear folds over. So to the right of that line, the ear's gonna fold over. And I'm using the Caput Mortem, uh, not the Caput Mortem Violet, this is the Caput Mortem. It's more of a sort of pinky, browny uh, tone, whereas the Caput Mortem Violet is more sort of red, um, and sort of maroony coloured, uh, sort of burgundy coloured. So I'm using the Caput Morton, which is a lovely sort of dark, dusky, browny pink colour, um, and just starting to plot in those areas that are really going to be sort of quite deep down into the ear when it's finished. We're still obviously very much at the base layer at the minute so I am um, sort of having a mix of using little uh, fur strokes so I've got some directional fur strokes and then also using little circular motions as well um, just to get a bit of colour um, down into the ear. You'll find throughout this whole video that um, when I'm working sort of on the inside of the ear you can see if you look at the the reference uh, photograph that is actually the, the actual drawing um, that's the reference photograph in the corner you can see that um, inside the ears all sort of like pinky not much for quite a lot of um, skin in there um, and then on the outside of the ear you can see there's a bit more fur and there's a bit more sort of direction um, and you can see some uh, some fur strokes. So in terms of techniques that I use, you'll see that when I work on the pink areas on the inside, I work 
uh, quite a lot in small um, sort of little circular motions um, so that I, I don't I don't want to see any direction of fur I don't want to see any pencil marks just some little um, sort of small circular motions um, helps me keep a nice sort of um, almost like a velvety um, almost like a skin like quality on the inside that's what I'm obviously looking for a skin like quality um, and not to see any of the or not to see many of the the fur lines so this whole ear is just a case of adding a few um, fur lines you can see here that I'm using the uh, the dark uh, a dark warm gray a warm gray five to just add in some little bits of fur direction um, and I do that throughout sort of add bits of fur direction and then take another color to blend out and um, just blend over the top and then start again there's quite a few layers that have gone down into this ear actually but I think it's worth it because the overall effect um, means that the colors are quite intense um, and I was quite sort of happy with the um, the overall sort of feel of the ear really that you know the areas inside look like the skin and on the outside look like uh, look like they've got fur there so yeah I was quite happy with that So to create some of the fur lines on the outside, um, I use the Van Dyke Brown and I use the Van Dyke Brown quite a lot um, in and around the ear. Um, I think it's the only brown that I use actually, apart from a, a raw umber in the Caran Dash. These pencils that I've used so far are the uh, Polychromos um, range from Faber-Castell. I do go on and use some Caran Dash in the ear, some luminance, and also um, a Pablo, and also um, a couple of uh, the Light Fast as well. Uh, but yeah, the Van Dyke brown that I'm using is a lovely brown with a pink, a uh, sort of pinky tone to it so it works really well with the skin um, and the, the pink tones that I'm putting on the inside of the ear. Keeping, as I say, I'm keeping my pencil sharp because um, this is this is a small area, and I want these tiny little um, sort of suggestions of fur, little flicks uh, both ways. Sort of flicking the pencil one way, and then flicking the pencil um, another way, so that I've got wispy bits coming into the ear, as well as wispy bits sort of going out on the outside of the ear. Um, I did uh, create a video, it was a Jack Russell video, um, I had to draw, draw a Jack Russell, uh, which if you haven't seen that yet, I um, part one, I think it's part one, I do go explain and do go into a bit more detail and explain um, why I sort of flicked the pencil one way and then flick it another, um, and that might be helpful if you haven't seen that video yet. following the reference photograph and where I can see these dark little uh, bits just using a bit of the uh, Van Dyke Brown to, to plot it in and then to go a little bit uh, darker again I'm using the dark sepia um, which also works really well you know with the Van Dyke Brown to add, um, add some of the darker tones and some of the depth to the coat. Just for the sake of the video I've actually cut out all the times I've sharpened my pencils um, because obviously that that's not interesting at all but you can see that constantly I've got sharp pencils um, 
don't let my pencils um, get blunt. Sometimes I might flatten the edge of the pencil to create a little chisel tip, uh, especially when I'm working in the circular motions, um, because I find that, you know, I get a nice smooth finish with a, a chisel tip on the uh, end of the pencil. But I'm certainly keeping the uh, pencils nice and sharp. Um, because we're working on such a small area really there's there's no room for error inside the ear um, as I said when we were on the eye you know to put a big chunky pencil in there uh, just wouldn't work the same techniques that I would have used on the eye in the first um, in the first part of this um, little series of tutorials either the little strokes or the little round uh, circular um, motion so there's nothing new in terms of uh, technique Keeping the pencils really light. I don't want to uh, press down when I'm using the pencils. I'm more sort of gliding the pencil just across the page and letting the weight of the pencil um, put the pigment, sort of letting the weight of the pencil work with the, the tooth of the paper. And then the, the tooth of the paper just sort of pulls off whatever pigment it wants to pull off. Certainly not pressing down hard. Um, and, and the fact that I'm not pressing down hard along with the base layer underneath means that if I need to correct something, I can just get an eraser and rub it out fairly easily because I haven't, I've not sort of pushed the, um, this color. So for instance, this dark sepia down into the, into the tooth of the paper, it's just sort of sat on the base layer. So once I've started to add some detail with the dark sepia, I'm just using a Pablo uh, from the Caran uh range, so a Pablo pencil, and just starting to sort of blend out the, the lines that I've just put down. I don't want to see any harsh pencil lines. I do want there to be some pencil lines because they're going to represent the little bits of fur um, and the direction of the hairs, but I don't want these to be sort of real sort of harsh lines. So throughout this whole ear, it's a case of putting the, the base layers and the mid-tones down, putting some detail on, and then sort of blending it, um, and then starting again until I'm happy with the, the final result. So in areas I'm obviously using the cream to blend, and then I'm going back to the warm grey one from the Polychromos range um, to blend. Inside the ear, so when it comes to the pink bits, I use a lot of this uh, Caran d'Ache Luminance Burnt Sienna 10%. Again, it's another sort of really lovely muted uh, pink colour um, and works really well, um, I think, to capture the, the sort of skin tones that are on the inside of the dog's ear, especially when working with the, the Caput Mortem. Um, which is just sort of like a darker, a darker um, sort of muted pinky browny colour as well.
and you can see that I'm just overlaying the uh, the warm grey one on top of the burnt sienna 10% and on top of the other colours and it's just creating um, the colour palette on the page. I'm just mixing the colours on the page by overlapping uh, or overlaying one over the other, keeping it really light so I've still got the light coming through, um, you know, the white of the paper coming through. Um, and it just just sort of blends the colors on um, the palette um, this uh, portrait as I said last time is completed on hot press watercolor paper it's uh, Fabriano Artistico hot press watercolor paper um, it was the um, I can't remember if it was the extra white or the traditional white now actually I'll put that in the in the description um, I'll check it. I'll actually have a look. I've got a feeling it was the traditional white, um, but I will check that. But yeah, the Fabriano um, hot press watercolor paper, which I do love. I think it just works beautifully um, at allowing you to blend your colors um, on the paper, as do lots of other papers actually. But for me, I just um, I do uh, I do love the Fabriano. So constantly just looking at the reference photo and once I've added another tone or another layer of another colour, just going back in to make sure those dark areas are dark. This is obviously going right sort of down into the uh, inside of the um, the dog's ear. So just using the dark sepia and again now the cap at mortem again to darken down um, inside the ear so that it so that it creates a, a 3D form really rather than just a flat bit of paper. and making sure that I do work around the shape of the ear. Uh, you can see here just sort of working around, uh, you know, just where bits of cartilage would be and where the ear might sort of change direction and just paying attention to that on the reference photograph and, and working around it and uh, paying attention to the shadows and the highlights. the video is not too dark um, to really sort of see what I'm doing um, actually uh, I filmed this as I think I said last time I filmed this um, at, at least six months ago and completely forgot that I had um, filmed it so um, started to create you know sort of part so people could um, sort of see the drawing process um, and then realize since we've we've done this um, I've actually changed my camera I don't use this camera anymore because I was having trouble with it trying to sort of focus it was either overexposed or it was very dark it was just struggling so we changed it actually not long after I filmed this and I'd completely forgotten that this was on the old camera so I've just pulled out bits of the dog um, so that you can just see the best part so like the eye the ear the rest of it um, I won't put on the video because it's um, like I say it's either overexposed or it's it's dark it's, it's just not great um, video um, so whereas I did the um, the Jack Russell and I did it sort of step by step with all the little mini demos inside um, it as well um, that's we're not going to do the same for this one but I will do um, another um one with the step-by-step -step guide soon with the extra sort of little mini demos on the inside of the the video um, and that'll be coming soon but i just thought i'd pick out the best parts of this um so that you know hopefully it just gives you some sort of idea as to how i went about drawing him just using the Van Dyke Brown again with the cap at mortem and it really sort of works 
uh, nicely. That pink tone of the, the Van Dyke brown really um, works with the cap at Mortem at creating that, that dark area deep down inside the ear. just using and back to the burnt sienna 10 percent and that along with the uh, warm gray one just added a nice sort of highlight to the pink hair is really the two colors um, worked well and added a nice highlight um, to that area the the dog did have um, some purple tones some, some some lilac tones as well um, so I've used the violet gray from the luminance range just to put in some of these sort of purpley lilac tones um, and again it's quite a muted color this whole um, yeah the whole dog actually all the colors are quite sort of what I would call muted um, so I was looking for those sort of muted colors um, of which the violet gray was one and just worked really well at adding those bits of uh, lilac grey into the, the portrait. I use the warm grey too uh, quite a lot as well. You just see me use the warm grey too and that, is, that works quite well at sort of blending out these, these colours um, for the ear. yellowy uh sort of sandy yellowy tones this is uh wheat from the light fast range which i i think it's a super color um i um i, I it always reminds me of there's a there's a paint company called fur and ball and um they do some beautiful sort of like heritage colors and it always reminds me of one of their their paint colors um, and i love it it's like a lovely sort of sandy uh yellowy um, colour but with a hint of green it's got that sort of greeny brown in it as well and I found it worked really well for creating the coat of um, this French bulldog so that was wheat from the uh, the light fast range um, and yeah I do use that quite a bit actually across the the, the dog for his coat And you can see that I just keep adding the, the darker colours and then just keep going back to the the warm grey one or the warm grey two or perhaps that burnt sienna ten percent and just you know blend it out, just keep blending. And then once I've blended it, I go back in with the darker colours, the uh, the Van Dyke brown here, and just make sure that those darker areas are uh, darker. Back in with the dark sepia again, um, just to make sure those darker areas um, are dark enough.
So because I want the inside of the ear to be sort of even darker, sort of deep down right in that little uh, that little bit there that you can see is going down into the um, ear of the dog. I've now gone to the Caput Mortem Violet. So we used the Caput Mortem, which was sort of the pinky browny tone, um, the mid tone, let's say, of the pink. And then we've gone to the Caput Mortem Violet, which is a much sort of darker, um, ready, pinky, uh, browny colour. And that just is going to deepen down right sort of deep down in that ear but also working around the shape of the ear around that sort of cartilage that you can see and that shape and my pencils now the the paper and the pencils they are getting to what i would call that sort of buttery stage where i can put um strokes down on the paper and i don't necessarily see the you know the pencil strokes unless i want to obviously of course um but if i don't want to they just sort of start to go down like butter and um and that for me that's quite a nice stage to uh, get to um, it means that my papers just sort of starting to pull a nice amount of pigment off the pencils and you do have to work up to that uh, stage really because you're not pressing on hard I find that I have to uh, sort of really work up to that stage where uh, you know pigment really starts to look quite rich as it's going down onto the um, the paper especially this this paper was um, the 640 GSM um, the so it's the Fabriano Artistico 640 and I find that I have to put more layers down to get to that uh, sort of buttery stage than I would do if I was using the uh, the 300 GSM um, which is the the paper that, that comes in the pads from the Artistico uh, Fabriano Artistico range um, it's obviously thinner and I find that I can get to that buttery stage faster with the um, the paper in the pad than this this with this like I say this was the the 640 GSM sheet. Making sure, as I said at the start, that the pencils just sort of flick both ways so I can have some wispy bits coming into the, what, what is the side of the dog's head and then some wispy bits that are going into the um, ear. Um, because obviously where the pencil comes off the paper, that's where you have the little wispy flick on the end of the stroke. Um, so I keep my, my, my sort of um, pencil strokes going in different directions to keep, to make it look more natural, I think. So just working on the little bit under the ear now, the sort of little bit where the, the ear, again, the, um, you know, the coat, the ear sort of folds round uh, before it joins the head. So just working up through those base layers again, you can see I've just put the warm grey one down in with the warm grey two and pretty much the same sort of order of the, the base layers. Um, Maybe slightly different because of course it's, um it might be a different colour or something, but I still go up through those base layers. Um, 
to get to the mid tones and then to get to um, the detail. Just like before when I was working on the larger ear, I'm just I've put some base layers down. Now I'm using the um, the warm grey again to just sort of plot in the fur direction, plot in the landmarks um, before I start to sort of add in some more of the colour. And again, the burnt sienna, um, just like we did in the the main part of the ear. Every time I put one little bit of colour down I can see that the colour next to it might need adjusting um, whether that's lightening up with an eraser or you know or making darker um, but the colours are constantly needing that adjustment as something else goes down to it. You know, I never work sort of just with one pencil in one area with one colour in isolation they always you know will relate to each other um, and a relative to each other so that you know they have to constantly be um, adjusted and I'll, I'm constantly adjusting things as I put a colour down. see that uh, you just see there that I had my bunch of pencils in my hand and then that came into shot um, a bit I try really hard to keep my pencils down on the table I try really hard to not hold them in my hand um, I always do end up having a whole pile of pencils in my hand because it's faster and it's easier and you know I've just got the bunch there that I'm using I do try not to because there have been times especially if I've been working on a, a commission, um, you know, where I've dropped a pencil, um, you know, a pencil slipped out of my hand. Now, fortunately, um, I've not ever had a pencil make a mark on a, a commission or something that was important, but of course it could happen. So I try and tell myself all the time I give myself a talking to and say, no, don't hold your pencils in your hand, put them on the table or put them somewhere else. And of course I do. I, you know, I don't, don't listen to my own advice. Just, it's just second nature to sort of build a collection of pencils in your hand but they have slipped out of my hand before um, so it's only a matter of time before it puts a nice big mark across a commission or a piece of important artwork And my work, my board is on a tilt. You can't see this um, because of the way that the angle that I have the camera set. But I do actually put my um, work on a, my, my sort of drawing boards on a tilt so that it tilts up. Um, for me, I just find that a little bit more natural. The way that I look down onto the onto the portrait, uh, it's probably to do with age. I should think. When I was younger, I did used to work flat on a surface, and and that worked fine. But I struggle to sort of work flat now. I find it a lot easier with my eyes to um, to tip up um, the portrait and work with it tipped up. So you can see that every time I put the, the dark sepia or the darker colours down, it never gets too dark um, too quickly. I like to sort of build each layer slowly um, and steadily so that, you know, for a start, I find that it, it still lets the light through. I don't lose the light. I don't want it to look too flat. But secondly, if I, if I find that I have made a mistake, I find it's a lot easier to correct it if I've got lots of fine layers rather than one or two very heavy layers because obviously if you've got one or two very heavy layers it means you've really pushed your pencil down into that grain um, and it's then really hard to erase that 
um, back off. It's much easier if you've got lots of uh, finer layers. Um, it's much easier for the eraser to pick that up and take it off if you do need to, if you know if you made a mistake. Um, so I always like to keep my layers uh, nice and fine. That, that's one reason, but you know it really does work. I find that I can correct things if I have to. just starting to work on the area that's sort of um, coming over the top of the ear that's actually going to curve around and again just going back to the beginning with the base layers and starting up through the layers again. I'm just using a warm grey again to add some uh, detail and some start of some fur strokes, um, some sort of hair direction in the, the top of the ear. And you can see when I'm adding these very tiny little uh, fur strokes, I'm obviously keeping the pressure light, but I've also tipped the pencil up a little bit just to work with the actual point, a uh, bit more of the point on top of the pencil. Um, so yeah, by tipping it up, um, you sort of capture the point a little bit more. Um, and also perhaps gives you a bit more control as well because you're sort of tipping it up and working with it a little bit more like, um, like you would if you were writing with a pencil. So this is a raw umber from the Polychromos range, which uh, it works well with the browns and the pinks and um, the uh, the wheat colour that I mentioned 
from the Derwent Light Fast range. Um, so I'm just sort of adding little bits of the raw umber just to bring in a bit more of the brown in certain areas. So I'm paying attention to this area with the pencils to make sure the pencil strokes start to come sort of over um, at a diagonal over in a curved diagonal really um, over the ear because obviously this is the bit that's that's curving round. So I want to make sure and pay attention to the, the direction of the the strokes, the pencil strokes over this area. And you can see with the, the darker sepia where the ear uh, joins the head, I'm leaving sort of little flicks that are white, which will eventually become the, the main body colour, the sort of sandy colour. Um, and obviously adding some of the dark sepia to capture sort of in between the little hairs, um, in between the fur direction. And that's going to help obviously uh, create the effect of the ear sitting behind the rest of the fur on the head.
So this is Aurora Rumba from the Carandash range. Um, again, it's it's a lovely sort of muted colour. It's got a slight bit of green um, in it, which works really nicely. And I used it in other areas um, on the dog against the sort of uh, sandy, uh, sort of yellow type uh, fur. Um, and yeah, I used that in sort of the darker areas on the ear as well. And then obviously back to the um, the Van Dyke brown. It's just a case of going around the um, ear uh, with the colours, uh, so the raw rumba, the uh, Van Dyke brown um, and the sepia and just sort of refining and darkening, just making sure that I'm happy 
um, you know, the dark parts um, are dark enough, or at least getting there at this stage. And then the uh, sort of lighter colours um, are light enough and blending the uh, the pink areas with the uh, burnt sienna, 10%. Um, and just making sure that it's all blended and, uh, you know, I can see little strokes of fur where I want to see it. And if I don't want to see it, then, you know, making sure it's all blended out.
So I'm using the Brown Ochre 10% from the, uh, the Caran d'Ache range here just to start to bring some of the yellow tones from the rest of the coat into the ear. just glazing areas with this um, this color as well just to sort of add a suggestion of it into um, parts of the ear that I want to just sort of have that yellow um, tone to it and then of course back in with the dark sepia just to add a bit of detail where I may have just sort of taken some of that detail out I'm using the Van Dyke Brown to just blend the areas where there would be the fur on the outside of the ear. Just make sure that I'm blending it in uh, so that there's a nice transition uh, between the outside where the fur is and then the inside where it's more of a, a skin tone and less fur. And then just picking out a couple of the highlights on the, um, the the little fur lines with the buff titanium, just to pick up a little bit of the um, the highlighted areas. Once I'm happy that I have got a good uh, sort of layer of. Um, color down underneath I can use my slice tool this is the manual pen cutter from slice um, to just sort of scrape back 
little bits to represent little stray hairs or bits of fur that's just sort of coming um, over the top of other um, parts of the ear and um, I think really sort of works well at adding to the overall effect of effective um, you know hairs and uh, bits of fur. And this is why it's important to have those good base layers down because obviously the manual pen cutter only takes uh, the sort of layers back to that very first layer that's that's on the paper and that's stuck to the tooth of the paper um, so for it to work properly you need all those lovely layers underneath it and a good base layer underneath it so I'm not trying to create every bit of um, fur or every hair with the uh, the manual pen cutter. I'm just picking out a few just to add to the overall effect um, and just sort of show which way the ear is going really and add a few highlights in. And then back in with either the uh, either the buff titanium um, or the uh, the raw umber um, ten percent to just sort of smooth out those those areas that we've just taken off with the manual pen cutter. And that's pretty much it. That's the ear. I'm just sort of starting to blend it into the head now um, and sort of moving on to the head. So I'll leave it there for the ear. I hope you've enjoyed this little video. If you have, please do think about liking and subscribing. Um, but yeah, that's it for the, um, the ear for now. Um, and hope you've enjoyed it. And thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.